Good morning. Welcome to our week 17 topic on e-commerce. Our topic for this week is all about the ethical, the social, and political issues in e-commerce. Defining the rights of the individual to communicate their ideas and the ownership rights of the copyright owners are only two of the main legal, the social, and political problems caused by the rapid growth of e-commerce. The ethical and the social, as well as the political concerns, posed in e-commerce provide a structure for organizing the issue and making recommendations to managers responsible for running the e-commerce businesses within the generally agreed criteria of suitability. Understanding the ethical and the social and the political issues in the internet of e-commerce and its use in e-commerce has raised the pervasive ethical, social, and political issues on a massive scale for computing. We live in the information society where the power and wealth are increasingly dependent on the knowledge and information as the core assets. The commercial development of the internet benefits may uh, the business firms and individuals, but this development also demands a price from the individuals or organizations. Those who seek to make an ethical and socially responsible decisions in this new environment must take careful considerations of these costs and benefits. After the topic discussions, you are expected to understand why e-commerce raises the ethical, social, and political issues, describe the different methods used to protect the online privacy, and understand the various forms of intellectual property and the challenges involved in protecting it. The ethical, social, and political issues in e-commerce. The major social, ethical, and political issues that have grown around the e-commerce over the past seven to eight years can be broadly grouped into four key dimensions. We have the information rights, property rights, the governance, and the public safety and welfare. Some of the ethical, social, and political issues that have arisen in each of these criteria include the information rights. So what rights do the individual have on the public marketplace or in their private homes to their own personal information when the internet technology makes collections of the information which is so pervasive and efficient. So what are the rights? Do the individuals have to access to information about the companies and the other organizations? In business context, the privacy is a sensitive problem. So it is easier to capture the data using the digital systems and the new data mining computational techniques. So the e-commerce sites collect the huge amount of the data pertaining to consumer taste their purchasing habits, and the high-volume items they scan. While the property rights answers the questions how can conventional intellectual property rights be enforced in the world of the internet where exact copies of protected works can be made and easily circulated in the world. Another issues are the governance and public safety and welfare. Governance should the internet and the e-commerce come under the public law? And if so, just uh, what jurisdiction does the law-making bodies have state or the international or the federal? So the government has to do with the social control who will control the e-commerce. So the elements will be controlled and how will the controls be implemented? So there are three basic ways to achieve the rationing of the bandwidth using the pricing mechanism. We have the CAPS plan, 
This is also known as the tired plants, wherein the usage and metering and the highway of default pricing. And then we also have the public safety and welfare. It answers the questions what efforts should be made to ensure that the internet and e-commerce channels are equitably accessible. Should the government be responsible for ensuring the internet access for schools and universities? Are such content and practices online, for example, uh, the pornography and gambling, a danger to the public safety and welfare? Should mobile trading of the moving vehicles will be allowed? The data warehouse. The data warehouse is a device that regularly retrieves and consolidates data in a dimensional compressed data store from the source system. Typically, class it retains the years of experience and it is being questioned for a business intelligence or other analytical activities. This is usually modified in batches and not in the transactions happen with the source network. The source systems are the OLTP systems which containing the data to be loaded into the data warehouse. The online transaction processing is a program aimed primarily at recording and processing the business transactions. The information from the source systems are analyzed using the information profiler to identify the data characteristics. A data profiler is an instrument capable of analyzing the data. How about this basic uh, ethical concepts? Responsibility, the accountability, and reliability. Ethics is a, at the center of the online social and political discussion. It is an analysis of values that can be used by individuals and organizations to access the right and the wrong course of actions. In ethics, it is believed that the people are free moral agents who can make choices. So it may be difficult to expand the ethics from the individuals to business companies and even the entire societies, but it is not impossible. Their decisions may be judged against a range of the ethical standard as long as there is a decision body or a person such as the board of directors or the CEO in the company or a governing body within the society. So, if you understand some basic ethical uh, principles, you'll improve your ability to reason about the broader social and political debates. In a Western culture, the concepts of capacity and duty are shared by all ethical schools of thought, such as the responsibility, accountability, and liability. Class responsibility means that the action they take are the responsibility of the individuals, organizations, and societies as the free moral agents. While the accountability means that the people or the organizations and societies should be held accountable for the consequences of their actions to others. And the third definition is responsibility, which applies the principles of transparency to the field of law. Meaning that the liability is a characteristic of the legal processes in which a body of law is in effect that allows the people to recover the harm that certain entities or institutions or the organizations have done to them. So there is a due process which is a feature of the law governed societies and refers to the process in which the laws are known and understood and the ability to appeal the higher authorities to ensure that the laws are applied correctly. So the concept of privacy. The privacy is an individual's fundamental right to be left alone, free from the surveillance or interventions by other persons or organizations, including the states. So the privacy is a grider that protects the independence the social and the political independence is diminished and even uh, lost without the privacy needed to think, 
right? Prepare and communicate freely and without fear. So, the privacy of the information is a subset of the privacy. So, the right to privacy of the information includes both the claim that a certain information should not be collected by the governments or business firms at all as well as the claim of the individuals to control the personal or whatever information is collected about them. So the concept of the privacy lies at the core of the individual controls over the personal information, the job process which also plays a key role in the concepts of the privacy. E-commerce technology dimensions. We have ubiquity, where in the internet or the web technology is available everywhere. And then we have the global reach, which is the technology reaches across the national boundaries. The universal standard, one set of technology standards as as the internet standards. The richness are the audio, video, and text messages that are possible. And then we also have the interactivity, which is the technology that works using the user interactions. We also have the information density, which are the technology that reduces the information cost and raises quality. The customization, technology that allows the personalized messages to be delivered. And finally, we have the social technology, which are the technology that enables the user content generation and the social networking. How about the ethical principles? In many cultures, there are ethical principles with a deep root that have survived through the recorded history. So these are examples. Number one, we have the golden rule. Do not do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Putting yourself into the place of others and thinking of yourself as the object of the decision that can help you think about the fairness in decision making. If we say universalism, it is an action is the is not right for all the situations, then it is not right for any specific situations like Immanuel Kant's categorical imperative that you have to ask yourself if we adopted this rule in every case, could the organizations or society survive? We also have the slippery slope. If an action cannot be taken repeatedly, then it is not right to take at all. An action may appear to work in one instant to solve the problem, but if repeated, would result to a negative outcome. In a plain English, these rules must be stated as the one started down the slippery path, you may not be able to stop. We also have the collective um, utilitarian principles which takes the action that achieves the greater value for all society. This rule assumes that you can prioritize the values in a rank order and understand the consequences of the various courses of actions. And then we also have the risk aversions wherein you have to take the actions that produces at least harm or the least potential cost and some actions have extremely high failure costs of very low probability. So it is an extremely high failure cost of the moderate probability which is speeding the automobile accidents. It avoids the high failure of costs, actions, and choose those actions whose consequences would not be catastrophic even if there were a failure. And then we also have the no free lunch. This assumes that virtually all the tangible and intangible objects are owned by someone else unless there is a specific declaration otherwise. This means that the ethical no free lunch rule, so if something or someone else has created uh, is useful to you, it has the value and you should assume that the creator wants a compensation for this work. And then we have also the perfect information rule. 
which assumes that the results of your decisions on the matters will be the subject of the lead article. And finally, we have the social contract rules, which live in a society where the principles you are supporting would become an organizing principles of the entire society. The internet and the trademark law. We all have the cyber squatting. Plus, if you say cyber squatting, uh, registering the domain names is similar or identical to the trademarks of other to extort profits from the legitimate holders. We also have the cyber piracy, which is registering the domain names similar or identical to trademarks of others to divert the web traffic to their own sites. We also have the meta tagging using the trademark words in the sites of meta tags. And then we also have the keywording, which placing the trademark keywords on web pages, either visible or invisible. And then we also have the linking, which build the hyperlinks from one site to another site. And finally, we have the framing, which is displaying the content of another website inside your own website within the frame or a window. For further references and suggested reading materials, you may visit these sites or these references for further studies. Thank you and good day.